Jason show. I'm Jace. That really did happen. That did happen. And if people are wondering and our studio audience is wondering, why did I crawl on the table? It was all producer Ted's fault. Uh, he said something controversial and I, like a little puma, wanted to attack him. But he was safe and I didn't. Anyway, we have a good show today. Uh, we have a story coming up about uh, Spanx. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Schwab uh, clapping for Spanx. I get it. I, uh, and it reminded me um, of a story that my friends love because it's horribly embarrassing. And I think today's show has that theme because uh, the audience knows there's a story coming up a little later that is embarrassing to me. And then this is too. I, I, I was slightly thinner about uh, 12 years ago, probably at my thinnest, probably too thin to be very honest with you. And I say that because I went into a store that I had shopped at with some frequency, so the woman knew me. And she goes, hello, Jason. I go, hi. Uh, she goes, we have man Spanx in. And she goes, you look real good in your suit with the Spanx. And I go, fabulous. Uh, why don't you hook me up with a box of them? And she goes, I think you should go one size smaller than you are. Now, at the time, friends, I was like a medium, like a medium in shirts. And I said, so she gave me a small. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Kendall, I would prefer that you laughed a little, a little uh, delayed there. Anyway, so uh, I get home, I took off all my clothes, and I'm upstairs, and I went to put on the small man Spanx. And the small man Spanx, um, I lifted up my arm, and they got to about right here, and I couldn't get out of the man Spanx. <laughs> so there I stood, buck naked, with my arms in the air, I'm rolling on my floor to try to caterpillar out of the man Spanx, and my friend Kristen, who lived down the road, who had a key to my house, comes into my townhouse, and she goes, I'm here, and I'm like, do not come upstairs. I'm naked on the floor, and that, you could take that a couple different ways, but anyway, so, um, the end. That's how that, I did finally get out of this, uh, yeah. I got out of the Spanx eventually, thus I'm standing here. Let's get started, Leo, roll it, here we go. Yes. And I promise you that this Spanx story today is nothing like that. Audience, say hello to my sidekick sister, Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello. You look beautiful. It's a good looking color on you. How you doing? Thanks. I also support the Spanx. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, they're uh they're a wonderful invention. Uh-huh. It's just don't listen to that advice. Don't maybe get no. a size smaller. No, my no. mom always told me like nylons and spanks get like two sizes bigger because it'll still suck you in, but it's like way easier to keep them on and then they don't rip. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Then they don't rip because nylons are expensive. This is a whole different conversation. I'm sorry. They, uh, no, 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 no. It's fine. Well, I just, it was something that I didn't know about. And I and still, now you know. well, for memory, I will tell you, I do still have that pair of small Spanx. Why? I, because I never wanted to forget that moment. Okay. So I have them packed away. They're about this big. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it doesn't take, they're, they literally are, I should bring them in and try to get into them now. Oh my God. <laughs> That would be absolutely horrifying, yeah. <laughs> I'll put Ted in there, yeah. yeah. Ted's about that size. That's fun. Well, we want ratings in Chicago, so we'll get it that way. Mm -hmm. We'll get it, Ted and Man Spanx. One way to do it. One way to do it. Let's get started, everybody. Leo Rowland, it's time for the hot dish. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! 
first up season two of and just like that hits max uh, Thursday Thursday and SJP you know they're all they're all over the place advertising she was on GMA this morning it's a two-part series of interviews they made it very fancy uh, so you know they're gonna save the good stuff for tomorrow but we have something for you today she talked about the impact of uh, of the show on society look at this in the writers room on our show has been from the beginning that if an experience didn't happen to one of the writers, if it wasn't a shared experience that was real, it could not be made up. Mm -hmm. And always saying it is taming it. Buying a place alone means you don't need a man. I don't. Everyone needs a man. It's biological destiny. Hello! Do you really want to be saying that? Your relationship is my greatest fear realized. Excuse me? I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and did you feel you were a Samantha or a Miranda <laughs> or did you feel you were all of them? I think, gosh, you'd think I would be able to answer this question by now. <laughs> I think I'm probably a mix of Miranda and Charlotte and Carrie. I think Samantha always had a sort of courage that I don't think I could muster or summon. Yeah, 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 get to the good stuff. I want the dish, I want, you know what I mean? And how is it that Diane Sawyer looks exactly like she did in 1996? <laughs> Diane has not aged a bit. She found the fountain of youth. Well, and you know what? Kudos to ABC. There are some networks that just when, a, when an anchor retires, because God forbid they're over 50 or 60, you never hear from them again. A good on ABC mm -hmm. for, for uh, having Diane continue to be a huge presence at the network anyway. Nice. I'm so excited about, th I'm, I'm more excited, I think, about season two mm -hmm. of And Just Like That than I was about season one, because I think they have course corrected. They listened to all the complaints. <laughs> Please, God, help us all. I hope so, because <laughs> it was like they made a checklist of things that needed to fix from the original show. Mm -hmm. You don't need to fix it. It was a show that existed for its time. Tomorrow, GMA on GMA, Diane will ask SJP about the return of Kim Cattrall. And she will say probably about seven words on that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, yeah. yeah. Next in the dish, society has reached a new low, really. Uh, uh, singer BB Rexa is recover. What? Oh, I thought I pronounced it wrong. I'm like, I think I did it right after you recovering, uh, after taking a cell phone to the face during her concert this weekend. I'm not kidding, this is real. She was performing in New York City. Look at this, everybody. When the cell phone hit her, that is awful. She immediately rushed off stage and was taken to the hospital where she got stitches. That, so listen to this. It, it, the 27-year-old who threw the phone uh, has been arrested and charged with assault. Uh, and this is, this is what makes me want to throw something at him or her. This is real. You know what he told the authorities? He threw it because he thought it would be funny. Where's the asteroid? Seriously, where? I've given up. Where's the asteroid? Can you just hit us now? Just, just I've given up. Just where's the asteroid? That is awful. Let's not show it again. That's bad. I, I just, ugh. Look at that. That poor thing. Why? It doesn't make it better. I'm sorry. It doesn't make it worse. It's just bad. But it almost makes it, doesn't it, aren't you more infuriated that they're so flip about the reason, you moron? What, what's wrong with people? I think, who raised you? You mm -hmm. know, were you raised by some owls in the, in the, in the, in the forest? Who, owls would probably do a better job, yeah. anyway. I don't get it either. Like, I would never, would you ever go somewhere just like, I'm just gonna chuck my phone in someone's face? Well, I think it's because sometimes people think there are gonna be no consequences, so I hope that idiot is charged and charged and charged and charged with everything. You know what I mean? Well, because you see it now. You see it now. People are attacking comedians. They're attacking mm -hmm. performers. That nutbag, just because he thought it would be funny or maybe on TikTok. Right. Anyway, ugh. Next in the dish. Remember a few minutes ago I told you how I got caught in man spanks? Well, <laughs> here's a story I was referring to. Adele is raking in millions thanks to her Las Vegas residency, but it hasn't... Yeah, I've been trying to go. Girl, those resale tickets? Anyway, uh, but it hasn't been all... $2,000 for nosebleeds, oh. FYI, yeah. Anyway, but it hasn't been all glamorous. I love... Adele just puts it all out there. 
Adele told fans this weekend that she's been working so hard that she's developed jock itch. <laughs> not a joke. I'm not kidding. And she said she took it further. She goes, girl, it's all about the Spanx. She goes, a Spanx, hot lights, and all that sweating. <laughs> but there's no slowing down, though. Her residency uh, has five more months to go. So more Spanx. I don't know. The struggle's real. We've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Chafing's a thing. Oh, my friend, uh, I hope she won't mind me saying it. My friend Fallon from mm -hmm. KDWB. You know, I go to the Disney parks a lot, and sometimes in the middle of Florida, I'm just gonna say. It's hot. It's not real pleasant. Uh, yeah. No. And there's like this deodorant stick that you put everywhere, like yeah. where, and it helps with the chafing. It's called like chafe away or something. I don't know. What is it, Aaron? Do you know what it is? You... I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's a really fun name, but yeah. Huh. Girl, I put that on my face. I put it everywhere in the when I walk around the parks. Yeah. I could have used that in Columbia. I was. <laughs> You're pregnant. You just get bigger. And I was chafing, and I like, couldn't even walk. And I had to walk my sister like down the aisle with my sister for her wedding. So I wore my husband's boxers and put some baby powder in them. He told me it would help. It worked. I love you, honey. Okay. Let's take, let's take, let's take a note of what we've talked about so far. Yeah. So I told you about it caught mm -hmm. a man spanx. Uh huh. Uh, I told you how to get non-chafing uh, uh, rub. Yeah. Kendall told you how she doused herself in baby powder and her husband's underwear. Oh, and baby diaper rash. Da baby diaper rash. So yeah, we've been doing well. Very we've been good, doing right? really well. I promise. Yeah, I know. The show will get better from here, I promise. We'll be right back, back in a moment. This audience today, they're my people, man. I love these, yeah. They Don't know. forget, you can be in our audience. Go to eventbrite.com, search for The Jason Show, and uh, get your tickets. They're free. But, Kendall, tell the people we have one rule. Only sign up for a day in which you can actually make it. Yeah, because I, yeah, because... <laughs> 
to quote Steel Magnolias, I would rather walk on my lips than shame people. But we did have like seven people who didn't show up today. <laughs> so only pick a day you can come. Welcome back. It's all right. I mean, I'm, co I'm coming to your house later because I have your address, but it's fine. <laughs> I should. Why weren't you at my show today? Hello. Welcome back. One of my favorite SNL cast members was on with Andy Cohen last night. Bowen Yang talked about, you know, he's in the new Wicked movie coming out, I think, next year. That, my friends, is our Late Night Rewind. I think the movies are going to be, and yes, it's movies, plural, and I, I truly, truly think it is, like, for justified, legitimate reasons that they're splitting it. Um, it's going great. Everyone just, everyone just gets along. It really is. If for a movie this big, like, it feels like we're making, like, a little indie because everyone's wow. just, like, sweet and nice. Like, no one feels bigger than the project, which is so great. I mean, no one's bigger than The Wizard of Oz, you know? I hope they cut that goat, though. The, uh, the the goat the goat is staying unfortunately oh. the goat is the goat is in but, but you're gonna love the but goat but you're gonna love the goat, the goat. Um, who plays the goat who plays the goat yeah. right now it's a lovely puppeteer named oh god it's a puppet no they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna cast her later but right now uh. it's a puppeteer named Luisa and she uh. and she's been doing amazing line reads I'm sure anyway okay. um, Cynthia and Ariana yes uh, at Thanksgiving we were in London and then I, uh, Jeff Goldblum played the piano while they both sang somewhere over the rain it was transcendent. Yeah. It was Every crazy. time he comes back from filming, he's like glowing. Oh, <laughs> I believe him. So, Bowen plays a classmate of Glinda and, and Alphaba. They also talked about um, the new reboot of Roni mm -hmm. because the, the boys love Roni. And mm -hmm. Andy said, Andy goes, trust me, I'm not just saying this, but we've watched five episodes and the Watch What Happens live staff loves it, mm -hmm. thinks it, and he said the Countess Luann and Sonia spinoff, he goes, you're not ready. He goes, you really are not ready. He goes, it's that good. Is that where they go to Michigan or they go uh, to Illinois, by Illinois. Rockford. By, oh, by, by your husband's people. hometown, that's Hi. right, yeah. Next on the dish, the backstabbing has begun in the Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, Spotify fiasco. And we're only doing this story because executive producer Jeff hates them. Yeah. Uh, the latest report, the latest report alleges that Megan never actually conducted her podcast interviews. Instead, her staff conducted the interviews, and Megan's voice with the questions were edited in later. Fellow podcaster at Spotify, Bill Simmons, was more direct with his criticism and called the pair grifters. Oh. Oh. Don't clap. That, that aggressive clapping you hear. The call is coming from inside the room, right there. It's executive producer Jeff. This is no. I don't believe this. This is just. This is a tabloid writer who hates her, mm -hmm. hates him, th because you're not going to do a podcast and not. A that just seems ludicrous to me. It does seem too like they're just a little offended that this deal didn't work out because two different people that have really spoken out are people who work for Spotify that have said like, oh, 12, 12 minutes of work for $20 million, must've been a nice payday. I mean, they're all just sound a little bitter. And I'll say it again, Je uh, Jeff, you stop with the face. Stop with the face. I'm just gonna say, mm. anyway, I have no problem calling them out. You know that. I'll no. call them out when I think they're being ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I think this story's hogwash. I it's, do. I think it is too. Yeah. Next to the dish, while Spotify axed its relationship with Harry and Meghan, they've inked a new deal with a different A-lister. Trevor, no Trevor Noah will get uh, a weekly podcast on Spotify. Ooh, yeah. yeah, this will be good. You know what? Look, look, everybody has a podcast, but he, I, I'm excited for his. It will cover the hottest quote. This is, from the, this is from the press release. The hottest and most captivating topics of the moment. Ooh. Trevor's podcast will not be exclusive to Spotify like other deals. Um, you know, he was looking for a new gig because he left uh, The Daily Show I, last uh, year. I didn't think he was going to be doing any, any, uh, any gig with any regularity. I thought he was just going to maybe go on the road right. and take a break. But podcasts, everybody, everybody's doing one. The smartless boys have one. And speaking of that, have you listened to the, the Will and Grace watch along one? No, oh, I, I'm so, I know, I know, I know. I don't even watch Will and Grace. I know you can shame have you me ever later. Speed, have you ever seen an episode of Will and Grace? Like five minutes. Oh. I said you could get mad at me later. Oh, wow. 
not only have I turned on you, but rows two and three of the audience <laughs> have turned on you. It's done with me. No, all kidding aside, so this is Sean Hayes mm -hmm. and Eric McCormick. It's called Just Jack and Will. And they rewatch every episode and with then insight. Talk about yeah. It? Oh. And Sean Hayes admitted, we did this story a couple days ago. Sean admitted he's never watched Will and Grace. He's never rewatched a Sean show. Sean and I have that in common. That's right. Yeah. Well, Sean was actually on the show. Oh, so, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Next on the dish, reactions are pouring in for the new Mission Impossible movie. Um, can you believe this? It's number seven. It's the seventh. I didn't think it was that many. Um, it's called Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> That's an 80s reference. If you get it, 200 points for you. Here's a little bit of the trailer. The world is changing. Truth is vanishing. War is coming. It's been a long time, friend. You've no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. His fate is written. Shall we write yours too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That is written. Oh! oh. Wow. So, yeah, he did that stunt. He did. A anyway, critics so far say the movie is phenomenal, exhilarating, impeccably made. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, Electric Boogaloo hits theaters on July 10th. Um, this could be a situation, we just mentioned it, this could be a situation where Tommy Boy has the number one movie two years in a row. Top Gun and Mission Impossible. Did you just refer to Tom Cruise as Tommy, Tommy Boy? Boy, yeah. Okay, cool. uh, just, and, it will likely, and it will likely happen. You know why? Because it's going to, you know, uh, Top Gun proved last year we will get up off our couch and go to the theater, mm -hmm. but it has to be a big... It has to be a movie, and you know, you know what I mean by that, friends. Yeah. Not just a, a, fi a film you can watch at home. This is a movie mm -hmm. that you want to get popcorn, you want to see it with an audience, so you all ooh and ah together, mm -hmm. just like Top Gun. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying, I, again, critics be damned, the, you know, the people that don't like Indiana Jones, I don't give a rat's rear. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go because I want to see Indiana Jones kicking butt on the big screen. You know what I mean? In a theater. I'm serious. I don't, I don't give a crap what the critics say. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see him with the fedora, the whole thing. Next in the dish. So last night I decided, hey, you know, I'm going to support our network. You know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's all I said to myself. Jason, support the FOX. So I watched their new show. I love the title. Stars on Mars. <laughs> now, before I give you my, my thoughts, uh, here's a little bit of the trailer. This is the most realistic celebrity Mars colony simulation ever created. Hey, do I look like a real astronaut? <laughs> I'm William Shatner. At Mission Control, our celebrity has embarked on a daring mission to outer space. I feel like a malnourished Buzz Lightyear. Living 24-7 in our hyper-realistic Mars habitat in a social experiment unlike anything else on television. I personally don't think any of these stars are ready for Mars. Can somebody let me out? Except for maybe Ronda Rousey. She could take an alien for sure. They've all come here to prove that they have what it takes to survive. We got a big box that says extreme radiation on it. It looks like our box that they gave us our clothes in. So, guys, I have no problem calling out crappy shows, even on our own network. This is not one of them. Oh. Stars on Mars is just a hell of a lot of fun. It is, it is so fun. Mar, uh, Marshawn Lynch is like the command leader. Oh, no, God. he's not. Oh, Kendall. He goes, if you need me, just go giddy, 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 giddy. And he goes, 
are ye? And I rewound that 50 times. He goes, if you need me, just go giddy, 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 giddy. Or, I laughed. <laughs> McLovin is funny. McLovin is good in it. Uh, somebody on the cast thinks that uh, Lance Armstrong, who's on the show, is yes. Neil Armstrong. Not to be confused. Yeah. Demi Moore and Bruce Willis's daughter Tallulah's in it. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm not kidding. And this is what I thought the whole time. How much did our network spend on that set? I'm not joking. You watch it and you go, oh my God, it is one of the coolest. And they won't tell you where they're really shooting it. The, the internet thinks it's Australia, okay. but it looks like Mars. It behaves like Mars. Even the stars are like, wow, this is realistic. And William Shatner plays Mission Control. Uh, the whole thing is... is so What is that? <laughs> it's a Mars rover. Cute. I'll get it. You stay there, my love. Okay. <laughs> what is it? It's a gay bear. Yay! It's, it's, this is our bear, Juice Newton. That's right. How'd they know? There we go. Oh, there we thanks. go. There's Juice Newton. Baby practice. All, all dressed up, all dressed up <laughs> for pride. Thank you, Mars Rover. There we go. I love that. You know what's great about? Okay, first of all, no, we have the damn intern driving the Mars <laughs> Rover. Uh, give it up for Mason. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Mason, could you have it go that way, Mason? There we go. Can we get beverages on that thing to deliver to the audience? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New episodes of Stars on Mars hits Fox on Friday nights. You can watch it also streaming on Hulu. We're going to take a break. Stay right there. We'll be back after this. There's Juice Newton. Coming up, our Chicago road trip continues. And today, it brings us to Wrigley Field, where... I experienced one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, and I do mean that. And a little bit later, producer Ted is reviewing the 90 Day Fiance spinoff before the 90 Day. Oh boy, that and more when we come back. Welcome back.
Hello, friends. It's been a few weeks now since our show started airing in Chicago. Uh, hello, Chicago land. And uh, we, we're loving hearing from all of you uh, new viewers. Go to our Facebook page. Let us know that you're new to us. We would uh, love to hear from you. So in preparation for going to Chicago, uh, we decided to do a road trip. Uh, we've been uh, showing you. Uh, we have 15 stories to show you that we shot that weekend. Uh, and here is one of them. Wrigley Field is obviously a landmark, an institution in Chicago. So the Jason Show team decided, hello, we're going to go to a Cubs game. And uh, a couple members of the staff, including photographer Eric and executive producer Jeff, had never been to Wrigley Field. And you should know, if you're new to us, uh, Jeff and I have been friends for more than 20 years. And every minute of every day, we just make fun of each other. And <laughs> that didn't stop once we entered the hallowed gates of Wrigley Field. Look. Going. Yeah. I look like a schlub. Here we are. Just two dudes at Wrigley Field. That's dude First time. one. That's dude two. Oh, look! You gotta think that. Jeff has never been to Wrigley before. But I used to watch on WGN every day after grade school. What do you think? It's beautiful. Does it look different than it does on TV? Yeah, it does. Like, the ivy is not as green. And it's a little more old-fashioned, well, but it's cool. I love that you're, you're judging the I'm, greenery I'm, of the ivory. I'm, I'm used to watching in summer. Oh. OK. Forget the game. Pay attention to us. Now, when you say the ivy isn't that green, it's not summer yet. It'll get greener. They make enough money. They can make green ivy. Spray paint it. But what do you think of the ballpark? Oh, it's beautiful. I like how it's, it's like old-fashioned in a good way. Target Field was built in 2010, so he's used to that. Fun this fact. Is <laughs> I've been to the Cub Spring Training in uh, Phoenix, in Scottsdale. Is they that a, a brand-new ballpark? Done. Is that a fun fact? I guess it is. Very fun. Yeah. Have you had a Chicago dog yet? No, it's on the way. I, I know. I ordered it in the app. They have, even though this is a classic ball field, they have mobile ordering. You can, the stuff will come right to Jeff. He ordered a hot dog on his very archaic iPhone, and it will come right to him. Did I order one of those baseball bat beers? I think you need a break from the beer and cocktails. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a hot dog, Eric? Okay. That pitch clock is quick, though. Look at that. Yeah. It moves. The pitching, the clock works, man. It keeps it going. I like it. I love the new pitching clock. Let's get this going. We, we got stuff to do. Should we do a new segment called Jason on Sports? Yeah. I do like it. Look, we can't mess around. 20 seconds. You got to get the game going. But I've heard a lot of parks are worried because they're losing their money on concessions. Or we don't need the games are so fast. an avatar length <laughs> game. Don't tell In James Cameron. <laughs> oh my god, here we go. Our food's coming. Our food is coming. This is his first Wrigley hot dog. Does it have ketchup on it? I don't know. Am I allowed to have ketchup? No, not in Chicago. My must have at every game is peanuts. peanuts. May I have some? Can I have a fragrant moment with my peanuts? Take it all, Lisa. Okay, settle down. The condiments are coming. I, you know I'm give, all about the give, condiments. I know. Give the guy a moment. Look, ketchup. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. They have ketchup Will in the ballpark. Will I be kicked out of Chicago for well, putting ketchup? Just put the ketchup on quietly. <laughs> don't tell anybody. And eat it quickly. <laughs> I know, Eric, don't say anything. <laughs> You're eating it like a mouse. Eat it like a man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. If you were in Major League Baseball, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> At your age, it's. What would your walk-up song be? Probably something by ABBA. The winner takes it all. Do you think anyone in the ballpark would be like, "Oh, he must be serious"? It's ABBA. The winner takes it all. 
Mamma Mia. <laughs> Mine would be Let's Hear It For The Boy by Denise Williams or anything by Laura Branigan. Jason, she's dead now. Is she dead? She died about two years ago. Whatever. People can have dead singers coming to the field. Jason Matheson. <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> I think I got your number. Martha, is he a homosexual? <laughs> Everybody in the stands. Is he a gay baseball player? <laughs> He's the Greg Luganus of the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> if you know who Greg Luganis is, you're our age. Oh, <laughs> uh, can I tell you? Uh, that was before, guys. We only had like two drinks at that point. Uh, but let me tell you, the end of that story that we did not capture, and it's been an ongoing joke uh, ever since, is photographer. So Jeff got his food lickety split. Mm -hmm. He scanned the QR code. That guy was there in two seconds. Photographer Eric and I, we scanned our, our thing, ordered our food. We are still waiting for those hot dogs. <laughs> they never came. So the rest of the trip, every time we'd be doing something, photographer Eric would go like this. Hey guys, um, could we swing by Wrigley and get my hot dog? Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm very hungry. So there are a few things that happened at Wrigley Field that you didn't get to see. And one of them is so embarrassing, and I'm really not overplaying it. I am a guy that I don't like to be embarrassed. You'll hear that story and the reaction on film when we come back. Back in a moment. Uh, You just saw our Jason show uh, trip to Wrigley Field, but we didn't have time to show you everything that happened that day. Uh, and there's a moment that I'm still mortified about today. Uh, and it happened when we were in the legendary broadcast booth of Wrigley. Um, you know, hello, it's where Harry Carey was. And so here's the deal. Uh, we're, we're good friends, we're friends with uh, 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 former twin and former cub, uh, the great Ron Coomer and, and his wife Paula. And they were very, they were nice enough to invite us up to the broadcast booth. Paula said, if Ron can, you guys can come up. All, all joking aside, it was magical. I mean, hello, Harry Carey was in the booth next door. So we're up there and obviously 
Ron is broadcasting uh, as we're up there, so none of us are speaking. We're walking like turtles, okay? <laughs> and then Ron's producer was nice enough to grab a pair of headphones and put them on me so I could hear the broadcast and uh, him calling the game. Well, the, the Cubs weren't doing well that whole game, but then they took the lead, and the moment this home run happened, I screamed. <laughs> And this happened. Because I would look for that slider and hope that he leaves one in the middle of the plate or up and out over the plate. Mortified. You look at the wall. I, I got to tell. It's one of my. It's like kryptonite. I do not like to be embarrassed. I don't like like if we're in a public setting and someone's really loud. I get I get she secondhand embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And I felt so bad because Ron and Paula were so nice to invite us up there. And they because I love them and I know better. If any, did you see my husband's face? Exactly. Everybody and my best friend Lisa, they were. I if anybody in that room should know to keep your big mouth shut, it's me. <laughs> and I screamed at the top of my lungs. Ron said later, he goes, Jace, I didn't mind because you were rooting for the Cubbies. Uh, now, Ron, Ron and Paula's generosity didn't stop there. Uh, they always hang out uh, at Bleachers, uh, right across, right by uh, uh, the Cub, right by Wrigley Field. And they were nice enough to invite us to hang out with them for a little while. And Ron let me wear his World Series ring. Uh, and let me tell you, this thing weighed um, like the it, it weighed about the size of two two large dogs. It was giant. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I'm not joking. It is that heavy. I don't know how Ron doesn't tip forward wearing it, but it was such a great moment. We had so much, oh, there's Paula. Love you, Paula. Um, but they were so nice to us and treated our whole crew uh, just wonderfully. Uh, if you ever get a chance, if you're watching us from Seattle or Wisconsin or Minnesota, there's nothing like uh, a, a Cubs home game in the great Wrigleyville. So thanks to everyone that we met that day. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Back. 
Yesterday we chatted with uh, Misha Johnson about the new season of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days and our staff loves this spinoff. Look at this. I need to tell you something. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what? I can't wait to see you, girl. You look <laughs> fine. <laughs> When I hear of people falling madly in love online, I kind of roll my eyes a little, but it's happened to me. I've never met violent in person, but now it's happening. I'm going to Vietnam. Well, 90 day before the 90 days follows couples who live thousands of miles apart. One is in the US and another is in a foreign country and documents as they find love or something else. And we have a review and that means it's time once again for 42% of America loves producer Ted. Joining us, joining us from our control room is a show producer Ted Johnson. Good morning, Theodore. Good morning. So yesterday we know that Misha is uh, is one of the couples. Oh, uh, was she was she here? Yes, she was. Ted, you you accosted her in the commercial <laughs> break. Uh, okay, who else is on the show? Who else popped out at you? Okay, so we've got a follow up to last season. We have uh, Jasmine and Gino. Now Gino is this guy. He's like a 54 year old guy from Michigan. Jasmine is just this super hot, like 30 year old woman from Panama, and she's constantly yelling at him. He all, by the way, he's got like 18 hats. He never takes his hat off. He sleeps with his hat on, and <laughs> he doesn't want to get like intimate with her, and she doesn't understand why. And the whole thing is just bonkers. Is he? Because does, does he not want to undress in front of her? Is he embarrassed? He doesn't want to take his hat off. <laughs> so to speak. Ba -ba -bum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it, generally speaking, what, what do you love about this show? So you have, you have that, though, those Looney Tunes situations where it's just like, give me the popcorn, let me keep watching. This is amazing. But then you also have... This next couple, David and Sheila, he is completely deaf. She lives in the Philippines. And this is the one where it, you know, warms your heart. He's going to find love. She's hard of hearing, too. So this one, you're just like, oh. So it's like, it's like the contrast between just total, absolute bonkers and then, oh. Yeah. Are they your favorite couple? And if not, who is your favorite couple? Uh, well, those would be the favorite couple. But then, you know, you have Misha and, and, and the, whoever, Nicola. You know, I'm not buying it. I don't buy their relationship one bit. But hey, you know what? It's fun to watch. You don't, you don't think it's real? You don't think Misha's relationship is legit? I mean, look at the guy. There is, <laughs> there, look, she, she is very friendly. Uh, you know, she had this big conversion moment in her life. I respect that. I understand that. But you know what? The no. guy lives at home with his mom. I mean, he's 46 <laughs> years old. That, it's not real life. Come on. Okay. We'll see, Theodore. We'll see. But then. Okay. Now, this guy is not on the new season. But just so, just to show you how. This, to describe how great this series is, you gotta, you gotta understand who Big Ed is. Ed, Ed met this woman in the Philippines and then he realized that part of their tradition is he's gotta shower with her dad. So they, so, so they have to shower together and there's like rats running around. He's so miserable and he's in the heat too and he doesn't handle heat very well. So. Um, this is one of that, and, and he also doesn't have a neck, but you know, other than that, the, he, their relationship didn't end up too good, but the show itself, I mean, yeah, I could just stay watching in my basement for weeks. Hey, Ted, yes. I don't want, I don't want this to get creepy or anything, but should we do that? Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> bring Jeff and we'll all do it. That's right. <laughs> bring ph photographer Eric would be the wild oh. card. No, he would make it weird. He would he would be like, um, get closer, you two. Yeah. Get closer. <laughs> okay, now here's some soap. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Theodore. You can watch it on TLC. I don't, I, I'm not going to, you know, criticize another uh, culture's traditions, but I'm certainly never going to shower with papahas. Uh, I'm just telling you. I just want to be very clear on that. My God. Anyway, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> It is time for the world's shortest segment. Today, get ready to live in the post-apocalyptic world from the hit show, The Last of Us. Universal Studios is creating a haunted house uh, based on the, on the video game slash TV show. It will be a part of the uber popular annual Universal Halloween Horror Nights. Fans will follow in the footsteps of the two main characters trying to survive against the clickers. That's right. Horror Nights happens in Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Studios Orlando, and it will kick off in September. And girl, I will be there. <laughs> we'll be right back, back in a moment. Yeah. Uh-huh.
it is time for the surprise goodbye. So we don't know what's in this segment until I read it live right now. Today, a toddler being dubbed a snake bandit, a snack bandit, not a snake. Either. Kendall? Read. See, I told you I don't read until now by her parents. Watch this. Dylan, I know you did not pull a chip from underneath your shirt. That is beyond greedy. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Three-year-old Dylan. Look at him. Look at him. And, oh, her. Look at her. And there's a chip I'm hiding in my shirt. Yep. <laughs> right there. Three-year-old Dylan was in a timeout when her mom noticed that she pulled a chip from under her shirt. Her parents now started a TikTok page called Snack Bandits, featuring their two daughters and how they sneak food around the house. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. I used to hide snacks in my cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, little programming note. Starting next week, the Jason Show Before the Show show, where we take you inside our pre-show meeting, will move to the Jason Show YouTube page. So head over and subscribe right now. Go to YouTube and search for the Jason Show. Tomorrow, Chef and Roku's channel star, my buddy, John Sigamora, will join us. And I think he's cooking, too. But right now, it's going to do it for us. Go out there and be yourself, because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.